What's up guys, Larry Chen here, and I am in Utah at the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum. So we're gonna kind of take a tour of this place. Ron Carr actually told me that this place existed and that I should stop by. So we we're shooting something at Hoonigan Racing Division. We figured we'd stop by here to check it out. All right, so we got the director of the museum here, David Wukay. How's it going? Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. Happy to have you guys here. Uh, welcome to Salt Lake. Welcome to the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum. Um, we've been around uh, in this space for about four years. We are a nonprofit museum, and our mission is to celebrate and preserve the history and the heritage of the Toyota Land Cruiser and to inspire people to get outside and explore the world around them. I'm really excited about this. I'm a big Toyota guy, as you guys know. I have a FJ Cruiser, a six speed manual one that I use to chase races, and my daily driver is a LC200. Right here in the front, we have our row of what we call our elder statesmen. So, this is a, a row of a very early, somewhat very rare uh, Land Cruisers. So, right here, we have a 1953 uh, BJT. So, this was a Korean War vehicle that was uh, produced to compete against the Jeep Willys um, back in the 50s. And, uh, uh, was built, uh, like I said, to compete, but it was actually far more superior, had more power, was more reliable. Didn't end up getting the military contract to compete with or to, to replace the Jeep. That loss or inability to, to gain the contract for the military actually gave them more flexibility in the civilian market to build uh, a better vehicle. Uh, so moving on here to our next one, we have a 1958 FJ25. So this actually is the vehicle that was the first Land Cruiser sold in the United States. It was sold in California, changed hands a few times, but we were able to get it um, into our museum a few years ago. But in 1958, there was one Land Cruiser sold, and this is this is the one. Oh, this is the actual one. This is one. the actual one, yes. So, uh, and Leaf's here because he's a big Toyota guy. He had an FJ80 before. But also, uh, you're a Toyota guy because you have a 4Runner still. Oh, yeah. I love my foreigner. Yeah. Um, so how do you guys actually acquire a lot of these vehicles? So almost all of the vehicles have been donated to the museum. Uh, we've got people uh, that have connections all over the world to help keep an eye on Japanese markets, Australian markets, South American markets, and all of those auctions where some of our more unique vehicles will pop up. So it's not just us always scouring the internet trying to find where these vehicles come from. We've got people that do help us. Um, and again, that goes back towards being the, the resource and the organization to help preserve the history of these vehicles. Um, just another fun fact, uh, the uh, Land Cruiser Heritage Museum was founded by a gentleman here in Salt Lake named Greg Miller. And uh, almost all the vehicles here have been donated by him. Um, we've got a few vehicles here on loan from other collectors. And the, the more we can build that credibility and uh, be, be more connected with the Land Cruiser community. Hope, our hope is that there are more people out there who are willing to contribute to this museum and have their vehicles represented here um, to help tell the complete story. Now, I hope you brought a wide lens camera because what we've got here, uh, these two vehicles, these are uh, not Humvees. They're called Mega Cruisers. They uh, look like Hummers. They are very similar. Uh, Dimension-wise, they're almost identical. The Mega Cruiser is a little bit longer than a Humvee. Um, however, these are Toyotas. They're not made by you know, AM General or GM. And um, the military version here on the left, uh, we've got an example of, they made a, a few thousand of these for the Japanese Defense Force back in the 90s. And then uh, in, the, in the 1990s as well, they decided to make uh, a civilian version. So they actually came out with 149 civilian mega cruisers. Yep, what? three wipers. Um, that windshield is insane. They have portal axles. This actually has four wheel steering and it's not the fastest vehicle in the world. This has a 4.1 liter four cylinder turbo diesel engine. So it's nothing super overpowered. And get this, I'm about 6'6 uh -huh. and I can just about lay sideways in this <laughs> completely uh, with my legs spread out. Probably one of the rarest vehicles we have in the museum. What the? Uh, it's so wide it has two rear wipers. Two rear wipers. I want this. Oh, that is incredible. Back when they were new, I think they were somewhere between $170,000, $180,000. Um, think of this thing on smaller Japanese roads. Can't really kind of picture that. So um, it, was a, it was definitely a, a novelty piece. Uh, very rare now and still one of the coolest vehicles Toyota ever made. I could not imagine driving this in Japan. You'll have to be Austin Powersing your, your way around. It barely every, fits on US roads. Road. <laughs> I love that you put it right next to the fire trucks. That was intentional, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we actually, we have a fourth fire truck, so we now have four fire trucks. 
This one here is a uh, German hose tender. We've got three Japanese fire trucks. One, the one here is a 19, or a, sorry, an FJ56 fire truck that was built by Merida, which is a Japanese fire truck um, building company. And then we've also got an FJ62 fire truck. And then this one here is a, uh, a 70 series fire truck. Um, this whole row here on the left, we, we call it our, our misfits row. So these are all where you'll find the FJ Cruiser, Toyota Blizzard. So they're not necessarily land cruisers, but they share a lot of the same DNA. Another interesting point about the FJ Cruiser, this here is another one of our rarest vehicles, very unassuming. Uh, but it's a uh, Japanese PX-10. So what you'll notice about this PX-10 is it's got a 40 series front end, uh, 70 series doors. So this was actually a vehicle that was produced in the 90s. So it was kind of their first attempt at an FJ Cruiser, 10 years before the FJ Cruiser actually was built. And then 10, uh, 10 years later, obviously they made the FJ Cruiser. So a lot of people think that the FJ Cruiser was intended to be a throwback directly to the FJ-40, which there is some truth in that but it was actually just an extension or a newer version of this PX-10. Incredible, yeah. never even seen one, never even heard of it. Yeah. And then this crazy looking thing here is an FQ-15. This is an Australian farm vehicle. Wow. Um, we're still trying to figure out some of the information on this one, but again, part of the Land Cruiser family, part of the Land Cruiser DNA. One of those ones that not many people have heard about. Right behind you here is a uh, FZJ-105. So when people, th so you, he's crawling under there for a reason. What are you doing? Solid axle. Yep. <laughs> so people think that the FZJ80 or the 80 series Land Cruiser was the last true off-road Land Cruiser. But in Australia for a few years, they, they transferred that solid front axle and the FZJ engine or the 1FZ engine over to a 100 series body. So in this 100 series, you actually do have a solid front axle um, in the six cylinder engine that you get in the 80 series Land Cruiser. So this is really kind of the last true off-roader um, of Land Cruisers because of those things. Just being here is making me more and more upset because I can't have any of these vehicles. Yep. So this is our uh, 70 series Land Cruiser row. We've got a lot of two-door 70 series. We have FJ73s, BJ74s. So a lot of the two-door short and medium wheelbase 70 series that were very prevalent in Australia and Japan. We never saw a 70 series come to the US at all. Um, so these are, now getting old enough to where you start to see a lot of these being imported in the United States um, and built into off-roaders. And the nice thing is you can get these with, with diesel engines, which is something that a lot of people are seeking. Um, so back here, we've got uh, Expedition 7. So Expedition 7 was a group started by the museum's founder, Greg Miller. The goal was to travel all seven continents by four by four vehicle, obviously Land Cruiser. These vehicles between uh, roughly 2012 to 2014, traveled all seven continents. This one in particular, this one is called Fernway, and this was the first 4x4 vehicle in the world to travel all seven continents, including Antarctica. That is so a lot cool. of max tracks, um, a lot of tires. That is so cool. A lot of gear, yeah. Uh, this one over here, this is a uh, Arctic truck AT44 Hilux. Uh, you may have seen this on Top Gear. It's oh, not yeah. the Top Gear vehicle but it's one very similar, so Arctic Trucks makes. This one some of these. Uh, doesn't have the toilet seat on the back then. Clarkson! All right, and then these our, are the old school. Then our famous 40 series lineup. It's so cool that you guys have pretty much every version. With the 40 series, this row and, and this group of cars is where people come in and they just say, like my mom, my dad, like had this growing up. We used to always jump in it. We used to go in the mountains and people just have so many memories with a 40 series Land Cruiser and they just love walking down this aisle and bringing back all those memories. Well, if you guys are in the Salt Lake City area, make sure you stop by. In fact, this is a destination in itself for any car nerd, any off-road nerd. So make sure you guys check them out online at landcruiserhm.com and also on Instagram at landcruisermuseum. That's a wrap.